Chris Wellborn gets you a nice punt return there. You guys are able to kick a field goal, salvage a tie going to the locker rooms. What'd you tell those guys in the locker room with the peach basket on the line? No surprises there, and not many on the other side of the conference either. We're a few weeks from opening day, and the Braves have yet to announce where Hayward will begin the season. Next week, Valdosta State looks to recover as they travel to Arkadelphia, Arkansas for a matchup with Henderson State. I'm here with the first lady of college football, Ann Bowden. C.J. Uzuma is one of the state of Georgia's top recruits. The North Gwinnett quarterback threw for over 1,700 yards and 14 touchdowns as a junior, but despite these numbers, he's committed to Auburn to play receiver next year, a decision he made based on feel. A little hard. I think that's what you know mainly took me a little bit longer. Um, after Kyle Frazier, the quarterback that they have committed um, to them, and after he committed, it was a little bit harder for me. But um, you know, I just love the place so much that it was it was hard to say no at the end of the day. The six foot six, two hundred and thirty five pounder made it a point to weigh his options, something his head coach Bob Spire thinks was the right way but also may have hurt his offensive leader's chance to play quarterback at the next level. You know, once he, they saw what he could do as a junior for us at quarterback, I mean, the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Floridas, all, all those places, if he had decided to commit early, he would have been their quarterback recruit. Because he was a little bit unsure and he, you know, he wanted to take his time, several of those started coming off the table. Yuzuma thinks his experience under center will help make his transition smooth. As far as going up and making plays is concerned, he thinks his physical attributes will allow him to get a chance for the Tigers in crucial spots. Um, I think just being, you know, kind of a big body out there um, is, is really helpful. Um, you know, third and 20, they'll put me out wide and, you know, maybe run a vertical to me. And Scotty Hush, the other quarterback, just throws it up and, you know, puts in a position for me to make a play. And I think that's, you know, what the coaches are asking for. And, and looking for it. Despite the position change, he may get to show off his arm in the SEC after all. Auburn has informed Yuzuma that he'll be featured in their Wildcat package next year. Reporting from Suwannee, I'm Dustin Sweetelson. Jason Hayward's magical swing has turned Orlando into his kingdom this spring training. The young outfielder has been the focal point of fan and media attention since reporting to Disney's wide world of sports, but he doesn't feel any added pressure to perform. Nobody can put more pressure on myself than myself, you know, as far as me. I have the best, highest expectations for myself, and I go out there and expect to do well, but that's because of the hard work that I put in the offseason. And I'm just trying to come out here and help the team every day and, and you know, become a better player. The Braves have said Hayward is competing for a roster spot this year. However, Atlanta brought multiple platoon players to spring training. All guys they feel are capable of getting the job done, but he says he's not discouraged by the offseason additions. You no, know, to say it's open. Um, you know, the way they went about it last year and they sat everybody down and we had our meeting, they said every job is open, no, nobody's spot secure. But I'm just going to go out there and do the same thing I did last year and you know, try and win a spot. We're a few weeks from opening day and the Braves have yet to announce where Hayward will begin the season. The last local product to patrol right field for Atlanta was Jeff Francoeur, who was traded a year ago at 25. From Turner Field, I'm Dustin Sweetelson. With national champion quarterback Willie Copeland possibly off to the NFL, Valdosta State has a void to fill under center for the first time in two years. Tucker Pruitt, Auburn transfer Blake Field, and freshman Chris Hart are the three favorites vying for the opening. The fifth-year senior Pruitt has spent the most time with the first-team offense this spring. He's seen limited action over the last few years, but the coaching staff likes the intangible and leadership aspect he brings to the position. Blake Field looked crisp and mechanically sound Saturday at the Blazers' scrimmage. Field was passed over multiple times at SEC Power Auburn by Tommy Tuberville. Field is hoping to join the likes of Dusty Bonner and Fabian Walker as Division I transfers who earned hardware as Blazer signal callers. Chris Hart showcased his big playability on Saturday, but while coaches have praised his skills, they've also expressed concern for his grasping of the playbook. One of these three will be named the starter following Saturday's spring game, earning a chance to throw to All-American Cedric Jones. Reporting for News 11, I'm Dustin Sweetelson. Hello, I'm Dustin Sweetelson, and welcome to This Week in the SEC, your conference week in review. Let's start off with opening weekend from two teams on the west side. First, LSU. They faced number 18 North Carolina in Atlanta, and it took a big touchdown pass from Jordan Jefferson to Reuben Randall, along with some late defense to seal it, as the Tigers hold off UNC 
30 to 24 at the Georgia Dome. Now to Tuscaloosa, where Nick Saban and the Tide had an easier time of it. Marquise Mays hauls one in for a score, and preseason number one Alabama blows right through San Jose State, 48 to 3. No surprises there, and not many on the other side of the conference either. Let's take you to Gainesville, Florida, where Urban Meyer's heart was up to the challenge against Miami of Ohio. Defense is the key for the Gators as Janoris Jenkins returns an interception for a touchdown. It's Florida winning 34 to 12. And in Athens, Georgia, A.J. Green gets the afternoon off, but they didn't need him. Caleb King scores the first Bulldog touchdown of the season, and Georgia goes on to route Louisiana Lafayette 55 to 7. They've got Steve Spurrier and South Carolina on the road this Saturday. Be sure and check back for all the highlights from the nation's toughest conference next time on This Week in the SEC. I'm Dustin Sweetelson. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to the Blazer Zone. I'm Dustin Sweetelson, bringing you a look back at the past week of Valdosta State football. This week it was a heartbreaker for Blazer Nation as they welcomed in-conference foe Delta State to town. Pick it up in the first quarter. Chris Hart has the ball holding the X button down to the 18 yard line. This was 18 of 98 yards for Hart in this game, setting up a Zach Williams field goal who gives the Blazers a three nothing lead. The Statesman yanked Garrett DeWitt out of the game in the first, turned to Blake Barnes, but he can't score from the red zone either. So they kick a field goal to tie things up at three apiece. Hart gets the ball back on the edge of his own end zone, looking to run and Matt Melton comes in and gets a hand on the ball. Dominic Spink scoops up the fumble for Delta State and he rumbles through traffic down to the 12-yard line. This was one of 11 turnovers on the day between the two teams. Did I mention? A lot of turnovers in this game. Delta State misses on the transfer and Demario Jones pounces on it. After a three and out, Valdosta State would force another turnover. This time it's Larry Dean taking it 27 yards to the heezy. That gave the Blazers a 9-3 lead but Garrett DeWitt gains his composure. He answers right back with a 44-yard hookup to Tremaine Jenkins. It's now 10-9 Delta State. They go to Charlie Brown's buddy, not Linus, but Chad Stroder to extend their lead, but Hart wasn't getting shown up in this one, folks. He goes through the air 49 yards to Albert Dukes just before the half, making it 17-16. The Statesmen come right out with a jump pass in the third to open up the second half, extending their lead to eight. And then Chris Hart responds with a 33-yard reception to his All-American, Mr. Cedric Jones. They go to Albert Dukes in the corner on the fade out for the touchdown. And then Tucker Pruitt heads over Dukes' his way once again on the two-point conversion. We've got a tie game. First play in overtime. Chris Hart rolling to his left, throws one up in the end zone, and he's picked off. So it's looking glim for Valdosta State at this point. Delta State well within field goal range in a win. They run perhaps one too many plays, and Larry Dean forces a fumble, giving Valdosta State some hope. The Blazers hold Delta State to a field goal, so now we're in a situation where a field goal ties, a touchdown wins, and Chris Hart on the following possession fumbles the ball, giving Delta State their second straight win at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Next week, Valdosta State looks to recover as they travel to Arkadelphia, Arkansas for a matchup with Henderson State. We'll have all the highlights right here on the Blazer Zone. I'm Dustin Sweetelson. We'll see you next time.